Ooh, there's a grasshopper right there. See that guy? Bye bye. All right, guys, let's talk about eggplant. Let's talk about how to grow good eggplant. Uh, a little bit of difference in, uh, in varieties. Uh, how to know when it's ready, what to feed it, how much to water it, how much sun to give it. Let's grow the best eggplant we can grow. All right, we've got a Japanese variety here. You'll notice that these fruit are actually a little bit longer uh, and narrower than the maybe Italian version that you're uh, used to, but boy, this plant is just loaded. So eggplants like a lot of sun. They like like six or seven or even eight hours of full sun a day. So you'll notice I've got this shade cloth behind me, right? Well, it's not over the area where I'm growing eggplant, okay? Uh, they can handle the sun, they like the sun, they're actually a little bit drought tolerant. Uh, so they're great for, you know, for growing in those areas that are, that are more difficult to get shade. And what's cool is they make shade. I don't know if you can see this, but I have lettuce growing underneath of this eggplant in the middle of July. That's a, that's a great benefit of, you know, a taller plant like eggplant or these kale behind me, they create shade underneath of them. Um, so, you know, companion planting, something that is a little controversial in the garden world for some people, uh, uh, but it's a real thing, um, depending on what you consider companion. Uh, do they like make friends and shake hands and say, hey, you know, let's go play Dungeons and Dragons? No, I don't know why I just went to Dungeons and Dragons. First thing that came in my head was poker, but then I thought that's not appropriate. So I went to Dungeons and Dragons. Anyway, uh, companion planting is a real thing. Uh, I have companion planted, uh, you know, beans which enrich nitrogen into the soil next to sunflowers, which cause the sunflowers to grow almost twice as big as other sunflowers in the garden. So it's a real thing. Now, additionally, shade, awesome. Another thing to think about is flowers. You know, you notice I've got marigolds and sunflowers and all kinds of, you know, various flowering things in here. I let some of my plants go to flower on purpose. Um, one, so I can get seeds. Two, so that I can get birds and bees, right? Uh, and then pests. Pests is a huge one. Uh, you'll notice that I have basil growing right next to my uh, eggplant here. You know, basil is one of those herbs that has a strong scent that wards off insects. And I don't know if you notice, but I have a zero insects visible on these plants. I've got a couple of holes. Those look like they're from grasshoppers. I did see some grasshoppers earlier, but, um, you know, companion planting is worth looking into. That's not what this video is about. We'll do one. I ranted on about it too long, but back to the eggplant. So eggplants. They love a lot of sun. Give them a lot of sun. They can handle it. They can grow in areas throughout the summer where other things might not be able to. Uh, they love enriched soil, okay? So we're going to do another video at some point on soil. I'll give you the brief rundown. Give them nitrogen early in the spring. Give them potassium, uh, you know, mid-growing season. There's a few ways to do that. I like doing compost. I like a lot of organic material mixed in, and then I like to feed them with some tea later. But if, you, if you're stuck with, you know, the Home Depot bag dirt, then get yourself some blood meal early in the year. That's going to be nitrogen rich. And get yourself some bone meal about mid-growing season. That's going to be potassium rich. So they're going to need that when they start setting fruit. Pretty simple. You can dabble with it from there. You can grow with it from there. I'm going to do some videos later on about my compost operation and then an outside compost operation that I supplement mine with. Um, but right now, back to the eggplant, okay? Sun, lots of sun. Give them sun, they love sun. If they love it, give it to them. Two, give them nitrogen early in the year. Give them potassium uh, before they start setting fruit. Uh, and, and, and give them enough, they'll take what they want, right? Uh, three is, is, uh, is water. Um, the cool thing about them is they can handle a little bit, like I said, they're a little bit drought tolerant, but if you let them dry out too much, what's gonna happen is the 
the the fruit's going to take on a little bit of a bitterness and you know the two things people don't like about eggplant one they get bitter uh, especially in the skin that's usually from stressing uh, and two they get a little too like uh, like dense and spongy that's from over ripening you can eat an eggplant from the time it's like this big right here right there that's edible that little guy uh, all the way up until you know full size let me let me grab one of these biggest ones right here all right so this one right here okay now that might be a little overripe I'm 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 pressing on it and it's feeling a little spongy it's not it's not bouncing back like this one here I press on it and it and it takes that indentation a little bit so uh, if you let them get overripe uh, you're definitely gonna be experiencing a little bit more of that uh, 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 you know that that dense sponginess so uh, if you don't like that well there's the problem now uh, varieties there's there's a, there's a handful of varieties of eggplant out there uh, my favorites are the Japanese and the Chinese varieties uh, and then there's varieties of those uh, but they tend to be a little bit longer and thinner um, and they're great for grilling uh, they're great for uh, you know slicing and, and putting in uh, like stir fries things like that uh, if you want to do like the Italian pickled uh, version of a of an eggplant um, the Italian eggplant which is squattier and fatter uh, is probably better for that now it tends to be a little spongier and a little denser than the you know the Japanese version that I'm growing right now um, it, it's just a little more delicate and I think it's better for stir fries there you have it this is a nice short video as short as I can make a video because you know me I like to do this uh, I'm going to sit here right now and ponder which, which direction is uh, east and west. Uh, I know that's south. I got that dialed in, but uh, yeah, without my compass, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm struggling with that one. What are you going to do? All right. Hey, guys. Don't forget to like the video. Ooh, there's a grasshopper right there. See that guy? Bye-bye. Anyway, don't forget guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell so you get the notifications. And don't forget, turn on all notifications. Uh, I, I was recently doing some research in our channel and I discovered that of our 58 or 9,000 at this point uh, subscribers, only like 10,000 of them have turned on all notifications. I didn't even really realize that was a thing. Uh, if you click somebody's bell but you don't have all notifications turned on, for some reason you don't get all notifications, it's like YouTube just kind of figures on how many they want to send you. So, I, I don't know. Google that shit. Turn them on. When I'm talking to you, I want you to know it. I want you to be able to at least, at least see it and say, oh, I don't, I, don't, I don't give a shit about eggplant. I'm not going to watch this video. Next video might be about cucumbers, and it's going to be, and you might want to watch that one. So, that's all I'm saying. Anyway, I don't know where Sid is right now. Uh, I may have just made a video without her, so I'm gonna kiss some flack for that for sure. And this kale's looking amazing. Look at this kale. I mean, come on. Really? Really? I love my garden. I do love my garden. You guys take it easy.